Mayor and uh, Council Members. Um, uh, for everyone else, I'm Ed Button, uh, the Fire Chief for Moscow Volunteer Fire Department, also the Fire Chief for the Moscow Rural Fire District. Um, every time I get a chance to uh, meet and uh, talk with uh, citizens um, about our organization, our volunteer fire department, it's always a real pleasure. And uh, uh, I've had some experiences over the years where I've got to go around the state and 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 witness and and uh, experience the other organizations that serve their communities and uh, in the fire and emergency services realm. And one thing I would like to say about the Moscow Volunteer Fire Department, it's an organization that really is unlike any other in, in its service to the city of Moscow. Uh, this organization's been in uh, existence since 1892, and uh, uh, it's been a very healthy organization. And I also would like to report that uh, even to this date, it uh, consistently is uh, – healthy with a number of people that are willing to uh, give back to the community. Um, for years, we've been uh, consistently to 90 to 100 individuals volunteering, e either through the fire side of the house or the emergency medical side of the house. And as of the end of March, we have uh, 97 uh, members in our organization, including our paid staff. And uh, uh, for what they ha have to do to uh, uh, become trained uh, to serve in these positions is r very remarkable. It's hundreds of hours, and every year it's dozens of hours to uh, uh, maintain on a continuing education basis. Uh, one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of, that the Moscow Volunteer Fire Department is actually a nonprofit corporation and an entity into itself. And uh, as fire chief, I serve as the president of the board of directors. And this organization ma maintains the fire station downtown that's uh, a privately held building. And uh, um, it's quite remarkable in the fact that they have to maintain that, as well as they own 50% uh, of our Station 2 facility. So... Um, also, one thing I'd like to report is the existence of this uh, organization saves the community um, millions of dollars a year because um, all these people are actually truly volunteers. There's a lot of volunteer fire department EMS's organizations around the country. Um, those people serve with distinction, but they also a lot of times do receive some kind of remuneration for uh, the time that they put in. And uh, our organization, uh, we don't. They're truly volunteers, and they're doing it for free. Um, and as a, an example of how well they do their job um, on the fire side, is uh, our state uh, fire classification is a, is a ISO level three, which is quite admirable for an organization. Um, in the formulas, it's kind of it's an economic formula. There's a lot of subjective uh, components to it. it. Includes numbers of firefighters, uh, water supply, how percent of the district that uh, has fire hydrants, uh, things like that, and training hours. And um, there's a lot of communities in the state that would like to have our fire class rating. And so it's another uh, feather in the hat of our organization. Uh, one program that the <coughs> volunteers maintain and has been vital to helping this place stay volunteers, we have a student resident firefighter program. I think a lot of us are aware. Um, as I give the report, many of you are aware of some of this, but some of the, you know, through our technology here, we're reaching out to the rest of the community, and not everyone is aware of that particular program, but we have 22 to 24 college students that we've trained up and have them man our three fire stations, and they serve as firefighters and EMTs. And uh, they actually help us quite a bit in having a very nice response time into citizens' call for help. Um, <clears throat> the Moscow Volunteer Fire Department Ambulance Company uh, is owned and operated. It was a component of the fire department, but it's uh, the ambulances and those services are completely owned by the volunteers. And we maintain a fleet of four very modern ambulances. And uh, uh, that part of the organization is actually our busiest uh, portion. And uh, when we get a little farther into this, uh, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see how busy they are. Um, one also unique uh, feature of our uh, volunteer fire department and ambulance company is we're the first organization in the state to have a volunteer uh, component that has been licensed to the para paramedic level. And uh, uh, it's been in a part of a, an effort to 
uh, over the last 10 or 12 years, there's been a, quite a bit of uh, interest in, in upgrading to this level of medical service to the community. And uh, um, I think it's quite admirable for uh, these people to be able to, to get to this level. And uh, I'm very proud of that. Um, we've uh, also uh, had a couple of, um, we're into our second version of uh, uh, the volunteer uh, paramedic program, and we've got seven students uh, down in Lewis and Clark State College at the Workforce Training Center because the Moscow Volunteer Fire Department, the Lewis and Fire Department are cooperatively hosting this program through uh, Lewis and Clark State Workforce Training. And so three of those of the seven are being sponsored through the Volunteer Fire Department, and four of them are paying their own way and so but anyway we're trying to uh, maintain some of the work that we've done in the 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 breakthrough in in the paramedic level and maintain it as best we can um, as I mentioned by the uh, the membership level um, we uh, that included the the career staff the paid staff administration and uh, there's five and a half positions that help to maintain and uh, uh, coordinate and administrate these hundred some uh, individuals and the the good work that they do, and uh, I'm I'm proud to say uh, myself Ed Button is fire chief, Dave Reynolds is our EMS division chief, uh, Joe Williams is the fire marshal and the division chief uh, rank, uh, Jason Bluebombs our training officer, uh, Karen Dangerfield's office manager, and Gordon Hubler is our halftime uh, fire inspector. We share him. Uh, half time with the community development as an electrical inspector. And uh, on page, they got on page three of the little sheet that I gave you. It really a, shows a testament uh, to how active these people are. Um, this I've got in front of you uh, the, the run totals for this last calendar year. And uh, uh, combined between the city and the rural fire district, our organizations responded to 882 calls for help. And if you look at the EMS side of the house, um, they're even busier. It uh, 1,395 uh, requests for service. And so uh, for 2010, our totals were 2,277 calls for help from the community and the surrounding area, which includes the rural fire district for on the EMS side of the house and the rural. So, and this is all uh, responses by true volunteers. And like I said, um, I think this organization is unlike any other in the community. And, um, and <clears throat> another item just to uh, uh, show how active these people are, we routinely do 20,000 hours of training as an organization uh, each year. So um, these people are to be greatly admired. Um, anyway, um, that's kind of the gist of, of what I'd like to report in, and certainly welcome some questions if you have any. Um, it is, I'm just happy to report the organization is, is very healthy and it's um, made up of a lot of active and uh, ambitious individuals. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Tim? Well, I don't uh, have a question. Uh, I've got a compliment. Uh, I agree with everything you've said. Uh, the city of Moscow is very fortunate to have a volunteer fire department unlike any other in the state of Idaho. And it's, it's a great compliment to the city and to all of the folks in your organization. I noticed that one of the things you skipped over when you mentioned the Class 3, um, or Moscow is considered a Class 3 for fire insurance, which is a low class. And it saves the insurance payer in Moscow a great amount of money. So. Uh, again, um, thank you for the great effort, and thank you for the insurance cost savings. Well, um, yeah, that, thanks. Uh, I will surely uh, spread that to um, everyone. We've got our next uh, next week is our monthly department meeting, and I'll um, sure and express those things. Thank you, Chief. That brings to mind a question that just occurred to me. Uh, when I worked in medical practices, we always we had time response time to the you know nearest hospital, et cetera, and that related to our insurance ratings. How much of your response time relates to our class three rating? Um, the in the the formula that I don't believe that it really 
is that heavy of a factor in the insurance rating, but there is a combination. The National Fire Protection Association has a standard, and uh, and if, where it applies to us, we're um, a combination uh, career volunteer department, mm -hmm. and and within that standard, they are asked. They have different classifications. They'll have uh, urban, suburban. Uh, rural and remote, and we uh, fall into the suburban. Mm -hmm. And for a suburban community, the NFPA standard is to have uh, 10 firefighters on scene within 10 minutes. Okay. And uh, I jotted our for uh, 2010, our response time was 4 minutes and 46 seconds mm -hmm. over all those calls. That's and, tremendous. Um, and the last, we haven't had a big fire, thank God, for the, over the year, but a couple of years ago we've had two large fires, and we were able to put 42 volunteer firefighters on on scene. And uh, um, there's a lot of career departments in this state that would be very hard-pressed to match that number. That's great. Thank you. Walter, I saw your hand up. Thank you, ma'am. Um, chief, serving as the council liaison to the fire department uh, during 2010, You've got one piece of information in here that I was not aware of, and it's quite uh, admirable in that the Moscow Ambulance Company is the first volunteer group in Idaho to become licensed to provide paramedic services. Um, I was aware that you were, that you did do that, that we moved into that a few years ago, but I didn't realize we were the first in Idaho uh, volunteer group to, to provide that. I believe I've also heard that we are the largest college community in the country with a volunteer fire department. I'm not sure whether that's a fact or whether I've just heard it, but uh, I remember coming across that one somewhere. Yeah, I don't have any uh, research to back that up. I, that would be interested to, to 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 know that as well. There are some other communities that have um, volunteer kind of a based organizations, like Frederick, Maryland, for instance. It's a town of about a hundred thousand, and it, as a community, doesn't have a, a fire department. It has individual fire companies uh, located throughout the city, and a lot of them are about the same size as we are individually because it's a much bigger town. But um, you volunteer and things like that, but they are also paid on call, um, either by the hour or by the call. So they're not really truly volunteers in a sense. Um, I'm making that fine distinction mm -hmm. here, but uh, um, I, I'd be interested in, yeah. in discovering that sometime. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that I <clears throat> that I heard if uh, you mentioned it, but the actual cost of those um, trainees that pay for their own um, training, how much does that cost each one of them? I, I believe it's about nine thousand dollars each. I knew it was a big number, so I just thought I'd. And so, th and three of them are being sponsored by the volunteer right. fire department. And, and they are to under contract for a service to rendered back to the community to basically <laughs> – we're indenturing them to a certain extent. <laughs> but they're getting some uh, training that they'll eventually do with whatever they want, stay in the community or whatever. But, um, yeah, there will be some strings attached. Wayne? Well, Walter was generous enough to uh, give up that position of liaison for the fire department, and I <laughs> thank him very much for that. And it gave me the opportunity to do that. Uh, this fourth year on my council and you know I really I've always been impressed having grown up in Moscow with the volunteer fire department My youngest son was a member of the volunteer fire department when he was going to the University of Idaho but you know when I yeah, the first meeting that I came to uh, it was very evident to me why our volunteer fire department is the envy of probably every fire department in the state of Idaho the 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 cohesion the camaraderie you can actually feel it when you have your departmental meetings and uh, an outsider would not want to walk in there I don't think they would feel comfortable unless they were invited <laughs> uh, and that's not a bad comment it's just that the camaraderie is so strong uh, amongst your department and that's one of the great reasons of the success that you've had thank you for this report it says a great numbers that we love to hear okay. great. anybody down here I see Walter's hand up again mm -hmm. Walter just one more comment mayor um, I Quick math on your statistics. On the fire side, you're doing on an average over two calls per day, and on the ambulance side, slightly under four calls per day. Um, these people are not just going to school and hanging around their jobs. They're out there running, running for the city, and we do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much.
Thank you, Chief Button. We're pleased to accept your report. Thank you, Great. Chief.